This could very well be the most important video I've ever made if you struggle with time management. When I first started doing YouTube, each video took me almost 20 hours to make. It was almost impossible for me to make videos, keep up with my data science learning, and do a solid job with my own work. Over the last two years, I've started to crack the code to balancing YouTube, my work, and my leisure time. These are the ultra super secret techniques I use to stay on top of things. Ken, these seem kind of obvious. Okay, fine, Dad. Maybe these aren't super secret, but I firmly believe if you integrate some of these things into your life, you'll be able to manage more with lower stress levels. I want to first start out by 100% calling myself out for the video title here. I personally think that balance is actually a myth. You heard me correctly, a myth. You might be surprised or confused by that statement. And I mean, even saying it out loud sounds a little bit weird to me. So let me clarify. I think that balance on a day-to-day -day basis is completely unrealistic. Being able to fit work, leisure, health, family, spirituality, and whatever else matters to you into a single day would really stress at least me out. On the other hand, over the course of months or years, I'm certain that you can find balance across multiple areas of your life. I find that focusing on long-term balance, particularly weekly or monthly for me, is something that has allowed me to manage my time effectively. It's nice to know that I can get completely engrossed in my work sometimes, maybe take a day or two just to work on a project, or it's okay to take a week off to spend all my time with my friends and family. I personally like to focus on projects and sometimes I have to cut a lot of other things out to get them done. I make sure that when they are done, I make up for them in other areas of my life. I use this in my own life to manage my content creation schedule. When I have lulls at work, I do more content creation and try to create a backlog. Honestly, I also did some balancing between my schoolwork and social life when I was in grad school. I spent a lot more nights in studying uh, for two years because I knew that I'd be forced into new social circles when I landed the job. I really like getting out. I'm very extroverted. I like meeting people, but I figured that it could wait while I focused on my studies. Obviously, something like spending time with your kids is not something that you can balance on a yearly basis. So based on the area of your life, it might be important to work it into the equation on a more frequent schedule. Okay, so now that we've gotten the balance myth out of the way, let's talk about elimination. A lot of people know this as the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle. At the beginning of 2018, I read this book called The One Thing, and I can probably attribute about 90% of my YouTube success to that single book. Essentially, it says that if you focus your time almost exclusively on the single most important thing, the thing that gives you the greatest return for the least amount of time invested, you'll find success. I really took this to heart with learning data science and also creating my YouTube content. Over the course of 2019, I essentially dropped all of my side projects and focused just on YouTube. I've always been someone who's had a lot of side projects, so this is completely new to me and relatively difficult. Similarly with data science, I've also had a lot of things that I've wanted to learn. To eliminate this down, I made a list of all of the things that would create the most value for me in my work, and I started doing those first. I also was able to combine some of my learning and my YouTube, which I'll actually touch on in one of the points later. Taking this to an even more granular level, even within YouTube, I focused almost solely on one thing. And that one thing for me was consistently creating content and sharing it with my network. You may or may not notice that I haven't done many sponsorships or brand deals to date, and this isn't because I have a problem with them. I'd actually really like to work with more brands that I think create good value for you all. Uh, the reason is that it really takes me a lot of time to vet products for quality, to do all of the negotiations, and to plan the video integrations. By focusing on the content creation, the thing that I believe was the most important, I was able to grow my presence more and actually have a lot more access to different brands that I was already familiar with. This in turn makes it easier for me to manage these relationships and potentially do more fruitful brand deals in the future. Now I want to ask you. Comment below with the one thing that you could do today or in the foreseeable future that would have the largest positive impact on your career or your life. That is aside from smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. You should probably start doing that thing like, like as soon as you finish this video. And for everyone in my data science audience, that one thing is probably projects, just saying. The next thing that helps me to stay balanced is what I call schedule hyper-prioritization. 
Every month, I plan out exactly what I need to do for the next few weeks. Every week, I plan out exactly what I need to do every day. And every day, I plan out exactly what I should be working on each hour. Every hour, I plan out exactly what I should be doing each millisecond. Uh, okay, fine. I, I actually, I stop at the hourly level. This might seem like a lot of time spent on planning, but as strange as this seems, it actually saves me a tremendous amount of time. If you batch your planning like this, you know what you should be working on right now and what you should be working on next at almost all times during the day. From collecting my own data, I found that the number one time waster for me was figuring out what to do next. Before I started scheduling everything, when I would actually finish an activity, I wouldn't know what to do next, and this would always cause me to start doing browsing behaviors, which are an extreme time drain for me. I found that I was wasting one to two hours each day related to the what's next question. I'd eventually get on Twitter or Instagram and just keep scrolling. If I average everything out, I generally do about 15 minutes of planning each day, and this means that I'm saving up to 12 hours per week by planning if I eliminate all that time wasted from figuring out what to do next in the first place. 12 hours is a lot of time, uh, if you haven't noticed. You could study more data science, you could do a project, you could start a blog, you could start a YouTube channel, you could learn to play chess, you could exercise like a lot, uh, a lot of other things. To plan my life, I use a couple different tools. The first being this giant whiteboard in my room. Here, I break my life down into the different things that I have going on. Admittedly, I might not be doing the best job of that whole one thing uh, that I mentioned in, in the previous tip. On this whiteboard, I break down each week and the things that I should be doing. Next, I use this high performance planner to schedule each day. You can totally do this in any other notebook, but I ended up buying these in bulk because they were on sale. And so now I'm just stuck with them forever, uh, essentially. I use my personal notebook to plan each month. I also write down everything that I did each day uh, for my own, I guess, data collection. Each night I mark down what meetings I have the following day and what tasks I need to finish the following day. In the morning, I then go through and fill in when I'm gonna complete each task around my meeting schedule that I set the night before. If I get something done early or I take too long to do something, it's really important that I reschedule my day to account for this. I used to use a, uh, a dry erase board to do this and that might be better if my schedule is moving around a bit. Um, as of now, I found just writing it in and scribbling things out works well because I'm getting better at predicting how much time things take. A huge difference maker in my life has been scheduling my most important thing first in each day. If you knock that out early, you can almost always consider that day a success. There's probably some pretty sweet, just like behavioral psychology surrounding early wins, but admittedly off the top of my head, I don't have anything to reference for that. I just know that if I get my most important thing done, I'm almost always happy with my day, even if I did literally nothing else. Another important part of planning is seeing what parts of your life overlap. Oftentimes I'll make a YouTube video about a topic that I needed to learn for work anyway. When I do this, I'm getting what are called economies of scope. This comes from economic terms, and it basically means that the cost or the time of producing two things together is less than producing each thing separately. For me, I try to overlap as much work and content as I can. I recommend doing this with your data science learning as well. Really dive into the topics that you're going to need for your work. Write blogs about them, think about how they could help you in other areas of your life. A great example of this is my leaderboard project that I built recently. I wanted to do a fun project showcasing some of the different techniques. I needed to do something similar for my actual job, and this product could also help my subscribers to stay more engaged and have more fun with the channel. Everything seemed to align for me to build that project, and that's why I did it. Sometimes, even when we leverage economies of scope, there are still things that we just aren't efficient at. My next tip is to ask for help when it's needed. Thanks. When a tool or other people can do a portion of your work better at a lower cost than your time, it's worth outsourcing. Honestly, this is something I've really struggled with. I like to have control over my process and it takes time to find systems and people that you really trust to work with you. Still, I think this is so worth it. This year I've started getting help with my podcast. I hired an intern, Mario, to essentially do all of the editing related to that. The editing is a lot less intensive than the videos on my main channel. So it was a good step towards potentially outsourcing more things. I also brought on my good friend, Bobby, to help me work more with sponsors and to add some quality assurance to my channel. 
Hopefully this leads to a few really awesome, well-researched partnerships this year. Help doesn't just have to be other people. You can also use systems or tools to save you time. A great example of this is Calendly. I recently switched to this to start scheduling my meetings, and it's, it's really helped me out. <laughs> Another one is Frame.io, which I use for sharing my videos and getting feedback from people that are helping me out. Again, delegating some of these things that I enjoy less or be less efficient at means that I can really focus on content and engaging in the community, the things that I enjoy and the things that I think I'm best at. When you ask for help and you start to do more work that's fun for you and less of the work that isn't, you might start to find additional enjoyment. Something that's really helped me to do more has been finding ways to make my tasks seem more like leisure. This can be difficult to do, but it can be one of the secrets to the balancing act. One way to do this is to use complementary tasks. For example, if I code a lot during the day for work, making a video uses a very different part of my brain, so I have way more energy to do that after a long day. This is one of the reasons that I've chosen YouTube over blogging more. I can make a YouTube video after that long day of work, but to me, blogging uses many of the same parts of my brain as coding does. Finding specific hobbies, side businesses, and learning materials that use different parts of your brain can help you to keep your energy tank full. Another technique I use to make things more fun is gamification. For both YouTube and my data science work, I set goals and milestones. It's pretty cool to be able to cross things off of my list and potentially reward myself when I finish something. Over the long term, something that you can do that will make your work feel more like leisure is to begin to design your life. You choose roles that allow you the types of freedoms that you want. You pick hobbies or side hustles that you find fun and interesting. You chase the things that you want to do the most. I'm very fortunate that my work allows me to spend a lot of time creating content. My schedule is probably more flexible than most people's in regards to that. I think there was probably some luck involved, but I worked really hard to build a strong track record, and I thought really hard about the types of roles I wanted and the companies that I wanted to work for. Admittedly, I probably get paid just a little bit less than other people who have similar roles, but I'd happily make that trade off any day of the week if it means I get to create YouTube videos, engage in the community, and, and to do this as part of my life. Something that you can do now to start designing your life is as simple as organizing your workspace. You have control over where you put your phone when you work, where you study, and quite a few other factors. You can set up your desk or your office to reduce distractions and keep you on track. As you can see, I have a penchant for whiteboards. The last part of life design is creating good habits. Just like optimizing your workplace, this helps you to take the conscious thought out of many of your positive actions. This is one of the reasons that I started the 66 days of data challenge. I found it way easier to study and learn data science when I had a streak going. It became something I did, it wasn't something that I had to think about doing. If you want something actionable from this video, try starting a new habit today. If your habit is related to data science, I recommend joining the 66 days of data challenge and the discord server and all that stuff. I'll link all that stuff uh, in the description. I still absolutely have a long way to go, but these concepts have changed my work, my life, my health, and my happiness. And I hope they help you out too. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.